Okay, everyone, I have a confession to make. I want to try fly fishing really bad. I want to get into it. I've always wanted to do it. I think it's such a beautiful activity and such a great way to go after trout. But um, I don't want to become a douchebag. That's right, I said it. Of course, um, there's great trout fishermen out there that um, are super inclusive and are great dudes, but I have run into a couple trout fishermen that really look down on me for spin, um, spin fishing for trout, and it's been really unfortunate. For those of you that don't know, I have a Facebook group called Wisconsin Trout Bums dedicated to Wisconsin trout fishermen, and I've even had a couple guys come in and tell me that um, spin fishing for trout is wrong and that it shouldn't be allowed, um, and that, you know, people who fish Rapalas or spinners in the stream shouldn't be there. And I think that's really unfortunate. Of course, that was just a joke. There's lots of great trout um, fly fishermen out there and I want to become one of them. I'm super excited about it, um, but I am a spin fisherman. I love casting Panther Martins for trout. I will always do it. Um, I think it's so much fun, but I definitely want to try fly fishing too. So the other day I ordered this package from Amazon. Um, it was recommended to me by a couple people and I watched several YouTube videos on it that made it seem really good. It has just about everything you need to get started. Um, so I wanted to open this up in front of you guys, show you a little bit about it, and again, I don't know what I'm talking about. So this could be crap and I might think it's good or it could be really good and I'd have no idea. But nonetheless, I want to open this box up and show you what I got. We got a box in a box. So this is from Max Catch. Um, again, I watched several YouTube videos on this and it was you know, rated as kind of one of the best bang for your bucks. It was about $170 I want to say and it has a rod, reel, comes with backing, fly line, um, leaders, tippets, a couple flies, a fly box, and just about everything you need to get in the stream and start fishing right away. So let's see what we have here. Another thing I should mention is, I mean, again, I really don't know what I'm talking about, but I did watch several YouTube videos about, you know, getting into fly fishing, and I wanted to go with one of the most basic, common setups, um, especially for trout in our area. So I got a nine foot pole that's five weight. That, from what I understand, is about the most common, basic setup that is can be utilized for just about anything. So this isn't any specialty thing. Um, this is a very beginner setup. Um, that can be used for just about anything. Oh, cool. Came with a sweet hat with a brook trout on it that I didn't, didn't know came with it. I'm a sucker for anything brook trout. I love the pattern. I love the way they look. That's a pretty sweet hat. All right, so the first thing we have here is the reel. Um, this is the Max Catch. That's what it says on the box anyway. And I'm gonna go through this kind of slow just because I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't wanna lose anything. I wanna keep all my boxes organized on this mess of a desk I have back here. All right, so the reel comes in this little drawstring pouch. I mean, it looks neat. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about it. I do know from the very little bit I know it has this easy drag system. Um, and from what I saw in the videos, it's just a you know really nice high quality reel for this uh, set. So cool colors, I really like it. What up? So it's a really cool looking reel. Don't know a whole lot about it. I heard it's nice for uh, especially for the price that it is in this set. So looks pretty sweet. Did come with a another thing that I really liked is it came with a nice heavy duty case. Um, you know, when I am out there fishing, I am gonna, you know, I many times wanna take a, um, you know, regular rod and reel, and then I'm gonna take this as well. So I like that I can pack this down, you know, I can throw this in the truck. Um, so that's another reason that I wanted to go with this set. So it's got this nice case. Oh, wow. Put that over there. All right, so here is the rod. Again, cool colors. It's got this like bright green, I like that. It's a four piece rod. I mean, I really don't know what to tell you other than it looks pretty sweet and I wanna try it out, but, and I have low ceilings in here, so this is a bad idea. But 
It also does have little like uh, markings on here so that you line it up right. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to put this together down here because I'm going to hit something and break it. Alright, so we got the rod, the max catch fly line. This is a hundred feet of weight forward uh, five line. And again, from the little bit I know, I know the one thing that you do want to invest money in is the line. Everyone has told me that the you know, fly rod is nothing more than a flexible lever to get the line out there, but this is the most important part of the equation. So I'm probably going to start with this just because I don't think I know the difference between good line or bad line. Um, I don't know if this is considered great line or not, but I'm going to start with this, and then if I do invest more money into this in anything, I'm going to pick up some really nice fly line. And then we got our fly line backing. 100 yards of that. From what I've heard, fly line backing really is nothing more than just insurance. It, one, it creates more, it takes up more space on the reel so that when you are reeling in, um, you get more, you know, you pull in more line per revolution. And then, of course, you know, you only put so much fly line on your pole. So if you have a fish run on you, um, you know, this is your backing to give you that insurance policy. I don't think it's that important. This is 20 pound line um, you're not casting this so I don't think it's a huge deal so I'll probably just stick with that then I got this cool neoprene case for my reel that just the reel just fits right in there for transportation and whatnot pretty stoked about this hat this is a cool hat and we got a waterproof fly box and I, there are some flies somewhere in here it's supposed to come with but this is also pretty cool. Nice waterproof fly box for your flies that I will eventually get. We got some nippers, which I already have a pretty sweet set of these, but this will be a nice backup. I don't know where to put all this on. Uh, this is a line straightener. This is cool. Um, some little clippers here that it's fishing clipper so it has a little spike on this thing that you can um you know if there's paint over the fly the hole that the line goes through on the fly you can puncture the hole through there so that's cool and then it comes with one of these uh retractable uh retractable things you can hook to your vest or your backpack i already have a cool set of clippers like this on a retractable thing so i'm probably going to use this retractable leash for my uh, line straightener, which I don't know how important that is, but I know how frustrating. Sometimes I've put my line on backwards on spinning rods, and I know how frustrating that can be. So if it's anything like that with fly line, I'm definitely going to keep keep that with me. All right, truthfully, I don't know if this is tippet or a leader. It's 55 yards, so I'm going to have to ask some questions about that. All right, that's tippet. These. These here comes with a couple liters. 5X, 4X, and 3X liters at about nine feet, which is what I need. So I can hook this up and then just uh, replace it with the tippet because I have a feeling I'm gonna lose a lot of flies. Then it comes with 10 flies in this bag. No idea what any of these are. I do know there's a streamer, a couple nymphs, and a couple dry flies. Other than that, no idea what these are supposed to be, really how to use them or when to use them. Um, so I'm going to have to look into that as well. And this is cool. I didn't know what came with this. This comes with a couple uh, strike indicators, which is nothing more than a bobber, but um, definitely going to use those. And the last thing. Oh, it came with some uh, split shots as well. Boy, there's all sorts of stuff in here that I honestly didn't even know it came with. I don't know if I'm going to put this together tonight or if I'm going to see if maybe I'm thinking about heading to a local fly shop to have them help me set this up and kind of look into some more stuff that I might need or utilize, especially flies. And then I want some help kind of understanding the difference between leaders and tippets for different flies. From my understanding, um, you have to change your leader and tippet depending on what type, what size fly you're casting. Um, so I want to make sure I definitely have enough for the main flies that I'll be using. So, like I said, I don't really know what to say. I'm impressed at everything that came with this and how nice it all looks for the price I paid. I will put the link to this um, system in the 
uh, description below if you guys want to check it out. I can't give you an honest review on if it's really good or bad or worth it or whatever because I have no idea. All I can tell you is I'm impressed with the amount of stuff that came and it all looks like it's decent quality from what I can tell. Um, I don't know a lot about fly fishing gear but I've been around fishing my whole life and this stuff doesn't look like garbage so I'm definitely impressed. Alrighty, so last night I was messing around with the fly rod and reel and stuff and um, I thought it would be best to come down here to the local fly shop and uh, get some help on best practices, you know, for putting that together and I also want to get a couple new leaders and tippets and flies and such so I'm going to go in and talk to these guys and hopefully get some insight on what I need to do and what would be best for, you know, trout fishing around here because that's the majority of what I'm going to be using this for is um, the streams that I'm already fishing, so... We'll head in and uh, see what they have to say. So like typically, dude, so like how this would typically work is, like I have this machine, which is freaking great. And it, these are kind of some of the same machines that you would see if you were like running spinning reels, spinning lines, or any of that kind of stuff. Like mm -hmm. this is the same machines that run it. So this bulk backing is on here. I take your spool off of this reel, because if you see how this works, the reel, ooh, that's kind of bizarre that that's exposed. Um, the reel is, uh, the spool itself can come off of this. And then how this would work typically is, I would slide this on, tighten this down. I can attach the backing and like use this, mm -hmm. like, okay. as badass. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and especially cause like we're super busy, I could spool reels very efficiently and very fast by doing something yep. like that. However, I'm gonna do this the old school way, which the old school way is how if you just bought a package and it just came with all this stuff in it, this is what you would do. Yep. So most reels are set up um, in, in some fashion. Left hand retrieve, meaning that when I spin it this way, it spins freely. If I push back, you can feel the resistance from the mechanical drag itself. Yep. Which the mechanical drag is right there. To do that. So this one is set up left hand retrieve, which is super common for right handed caster. Yep. Would typically in the fly world line with the left hand. The salt water world, some guys are white hand, right hand line. But so the first thing that goes on this is the backing. So what we have here, when you get a kit or when you get a package, if it is not spooled up already, you're gonna have a backing and a fly line. And here you can see I have bulk backing typically spooled up when we're at, at the shop here where we're winding multiple colors or we're matching it up. Mm -hmm. But the first thing that goes on is the backing. So I'll explain what the backing is. So what the backing does, so backing is insurance. The backing is basically an insurance policy that um, if a fish is so strong and so fast, he takes all your fly line away, you still at least have got like another 100 yards or some odd yeah. yards to, to not lose a $100 fishing streak. Because in the fly world, unfortunately, fly line is not like anything else where it's not like fishing streak where it's 10 bucks or 20 yeah. bucks to split up. Like fly line for a good fly line, a good fly line, no matter what anybody says, it's between 50 and 120 bucks. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. And, but it'll last you for a number of years. So, all right, so I'm gonna start winding this and I'm gonna use a special knot called an arbor knot. What the arbor knot is, is I'm gonna go through the spool of this reel. Tie a knot and the tag end here, two or three knots in a row that knot tight. Then we go around the standing line and do an overhand knot around that. Pull that tight and then what it'll do is that'll tighten down on itself like that. And what this is ideally set to do is that line with that knot stops it and holds it. Now here's where that machine is so handy because most of these reels will hold 100 to 150 yards of insurance line 
Then we go through the tedious process of hand winding it all. Working <laughs> back and forth smoothly so it doesn't pile to one side and keep tension on it. You get into fly fishing? Man, I was probably a teenager, early teens. Me and my cousin Bart used to go up north to the you know, south branch of the O'Connell, north branch of the O'Connell, and learn to fish trout with flies. Didn't really have a mentor, it was just two cousins that fished a lot together. And it steamrolled into kind of our thing. And then when I was, I don't remember how old I was, but I had a regular job, worked in a bank, kind of quit everything and just moved to Montana to sling beers and to fish as much as I possibly could. And uh, I met my wife out there. We decided to open the fly shop and spent 20 years of tight lines. Wow. February 1st, 20 years. That's awesome. So. Okay. So you can see, I've got like the foundation done. So this is the first thing that goes on. This is braided Dacron, so this will last for years and years. Now, now all of the cool modern fly lines today come with loops welded into them, which is friggin' awesome. Now, something that's really important for somebody who's learning this and spooling this up is there's a very important tag on the back of every reel. It says, this end to reel. The reason that this is so important is a fly line itself on the box will say weight forward, five weight floating, meaning five weight is the designation for what rod size you're fishing. It's a floating fly line. But the weight forward means that the line is shaped differently. And if you can see, like on the box itself, the line that is closer to the fly reel is very, very thin in diameter. And then as you get to what's called the head of the fly line, it'll get much fatter. So what they mean by weight forward is the mass or the weight forward is at the front of the line. So it's gonna help you cast in the wind, it's gonna deliver the fly to the target better, it's gonna give you more power. Now if you don't know what you're doing and you spool this backwards, you have all this fat stuff at the back of the reel and you got all this skinny stuff. So I've had customers who didn't have any experience doing this and they fish this and they're like, why can't I cast? It was spooled incorrectly, so. So now, when we used to attach fly line to backing, we would have had to use a very special tool, a special knot called a nail knot. Which basically, you'd tie this very specific knot and it would actually bite into the core of the fly line and keep that fly line, um, you know, tight. But now, because of these fancy pants loops that they put on here, what I can do is I can just do, it's called a double surgeon's loop. I can double up the backing I can do an overhand knot once, twice, pull all four tag ends together like this, and I've just created a big open loop. Then what I'll do is cut this tag. You take this end of reel off. Now remember, this is the end of the reel. What we're going to do is called the handshake knot, which is awesome because all that I do is I take this loop and this loop, and I pass this loop through this loop, go over the reel, and when I pull this up, it cinches up nice like that. The sweet part of this, and the important part of this, is the transitionary period between here, this knot, and this loop. So if you had a giant fish who actually took you to your backing, which salt water, it's inevitable, just happens, um, it goes through the guides and stuff cleanly and smooth. You know, like, I've had guys just tie this big giant overhand knot, like you're gonna lose every fish. Okay, now, I'm gonna put on the line. And again, as I'm doing this, you can see how I wander the line back and forth, trying to get it just laid on there as smooth as possible. Okay, so this is set. So now we have the backing on, we have the fly line on, 
everything is ready to roll. The only thing that we're missing at this point is you need the invisible connection to, uh, to the fly. So I'm going to put the leader on. Nylon tapered leader. And a general misconception that people have when they get into fly fishing is that, well, I can just take a piece of my trilene or my strand that I use for my regular fishing and just attach this directly to this and then attach it to the fly and make my own leader. Well, that could work, but the problem with that is we talked about the weight forward fly line. So you've got that head at the front there. Well, when you make that cast with that head, it creates that momentum. So if you just have a really frail, like wiry amount of tippet there, it's not going to turn the fly over. So when we buy tapered leaders, the first thing that you're going to see on a tapered leader is the butt section or the end connect of the fly line is heavy. And in fact, it might be 20, 30, even 40 pound monofilament depending on uh, what type of leader it is. But I'm going to uncoil this leader and this is going to be nine feet is real common, seven and a half to nine feet. Hard to see it, but a tapered leader means this. It's going to be very thick at the butt section. And as I run my fingers through this, it will, it's an extruded mono, so it will eventually get very, very thin. Like right now, it's getting very thin. When we hit the spot where it's very thin, this is the part that confuses people. This part of the leader is referred to as tippet. It's the finest diameter of the leader. So you have a full tapered leader, but usually the first couple feet of it are the tippet. So if you're fishing and you're breaking fish off or you're getting knots in it or anything, what you can do is when there's knots in this, instead of just throwing out the whole leader and starting from scratch, you can physically buy a spool of matching tippet material to just tie another knot with a, like a double surgeon's knot to that and carry on so you can rebuild it, repatch it on the front of your fly line and on the leader itself, these matching loops. So all that I do here is I pass this through the leader here and then what I'll do is I'll just double up this butt section and bring that through, pass that whole leader through. And then when I bring this together with that little handshake knot, there you have that connection. And again, you can see it's sheer, goes through the guides a little bit easier. So it's super easy to change leaders. Where when we taught fly fishing schools over the years, to teach people that nail knot with that mono, it's tough, you know, it's tough. So it's gotten easier. So as of right now, when you've bought a full seven and a half to nine foot tapered leader, the tippet is included. You attach this to the rod and you go fishing. You attach the fly and you're ready to go angling. That's it. That's the full setup. Uh, let me grab a pack of, like a three pack of leaders. Like a three pack of leaders like this. This is a very good example. Nine foot four X or nine foot five X leaders would be something that like I would just recommend for like the average trout angler to have. Now, as you're cutting back that tippet material on it, the leader's gonna get shorter and shorter. If you're fishing itty bitty super tiny flies, well maybe you want smaller diameters, you know, to make it look more lifelike and more realistic. That's where the tippet comes in. So what a lot of guys will do is you might have a run of tippet. You can see here, 3X, 4X, 5X, 6X. Now each one of these, the 3X is nine pound, 4X is seven and a half, 5X is about six, 6X 3.5, depending on the manufacturer. So basically the higher the number, the finer the diameter is gonna be. So what we like to do is if you're fishing bigger flies, heavier streamers for larger trout, you could actually attach some of this 3X to some of the butt section of, of this and, and use it that way. But if you're finding that the flies that you're fishing are itty bitty, teeny tiny and micro, and that heavier tippet's just too heavy, doesn't look natural on it, then you can keep going down to smaller diameters for spookier fish and things. So you could have it in theory like a 
five liter in a three You tipper. could, because okay. what you could do, you might have to sacrifice the liter. You'd have that, that 5X liter. Mm -hmm. But maybe you would go into that tippet and cut that down towards the butt a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the diameters were fairly similar, but you could then turn it into that 3X okay. liter. Okay. And then from there, that 3X, you could probably add some 5X to it if you wanted to make it back into a, a dry fly liter or yep. something. But by doing something like this in a modular way, this is allowing you to kind of have all of it with you. Yep. You know what I mean? So what's great about these is most of these all snap together and they'll go on like a tip of tee or something on your vest. But that way the angler can have four, five, six, three, four, five, six, whatever you have. And you have that with you all the time. So extra leaders and, and tippet are pretty key components for the trout angler. Perfect. So, and these are kind of cool. You see these, they have a cutter on them. Oh yeah. Which is rad. One of our most common flies that we're gonna set them up with when we start looking at flies that float on top are generic flies. Now, we have customers that come in and speak Latin, talk about all the different insects and Latin names. Well, the trout don't speak Latin. That's more for us as you kind of get into it. But you have a couple different variations. You've got mayflies and you've got caddis and you have stoneflies. It's just a handful of flies that are important to us as anglers. The first fly, especially when we look at the generic world of fly fishing that you should end up with is a fly called the Adams. The Adams is not a specific mayfly, but kind of a variation on a bajillion different flies that are out there. But it, it looks like a lot of different mayflies. So you want to definitely have a couple of Adams. So I'm going to put a few of these in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you a couple of Adams. But if you notice, I'm going to get them in a couple different sizes. Now when we talk about like trout flies as a whole, um, fish or trout themselves, size, silhouette, and then color. And to be honest, the silhouette is the most important part of what the trout is seeing, not the color. And when beginners are into it, they're like, it's a green one, it must be green. You wanna really match what does that silhouette look like from underneath to that fish. And that's why we have a couple different sizes there. So this is a good generic mayfly pattern. The next one that you're gonna want is a fly called a caddis. This is an elk hair caddis. A mayfly has an upright wing like this. A caddis looks like a little mini moth and has a down wing. And you can always tell it's a caddis because it's flitting around the surface all crazy. Mayflies sit on the surface and come down just like little sailboats. Caddis are like a little moth bouncing all over the place. So you want to have a couple of those in a few sizes. The Royal Wolf. So is that just like a big silhouette that just looks like that's something? It. it looks foodie. Yeah. You know, like in Brook Trout Diggum. So I mean that's kind of how it is. So to get started out, like this is a great place to start for, for dry flies. I mean we could go bon bonkers, but it's the worst to confuse somebody getting into it. Alright, the next fly that we're gonna do, alright, the next fly are some of the nymphs. And this is a fly called a hare's ear nymph. And the hare's ear nymph is again, just an all around great pattern because it looks like so many different mayfly nymphs in the bottom of the river. So you want to have a couple of hare's ear nymphs. The next one is the prince nymph. Will he be upset about that? No, he So this one too, correct? Yeah, there's a big white one and then a single one. And then the last one is the itty bitty tiny one. Right here, the pheasant tail. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Now for the beginner, this is like an awesome setup. Some dry flies that are gonna work, and some of the like the most popular nymphs in our world right here that are gonna work. The last category that you're gonna want to have a couple of are the leech or streamer pattern. And one in particular, most people catch their first trout ever of all time on a fly like the woolly bugger. The woolly bugger is probably one of the most common flies that like, 
from trout to panfish and everything in between. Like you have to have these when you're starting out. You can fish them upstream, you can fish them downstream, you can't screw it up and they catch fish. So, and on the woolly buggers, I would have a couple of colors here. And between this, streamers, nymphs, and a handful of dry flies, those are gonna catch you trout on most all of the streams in the state. Awesome. So. Wow, that was awesome. Um, they helped me out so much in there. I got a crack, he spooled my reel up for me. Um, I got a crash course and kind of the different things with leaders and tippet, which has been the most confusing thing to me so far, getting into this whole trout fishing thing, because it's not just like, you know, spin fishing where you need four pound tests or six pound tests or whatever. It kind of changes between uh, what kind of fly you're fishing. Um, picked out some flies for me and just was an awesome help. I apologize. I just, went, as I was trying to film him, kind of helped me out. I'm more, I was more watching him and trying to learn from him. Um, I was more focused on that than I was on filming, but so informational, so much help. This is in uh, De Pere, Wisconsin, Tight Lines Fly Co. Huge shout out to them. They were an awesome help. If you guys are in this area, definitely give them, um, give them a look if you're trying to get into fly fishing. Super cool shop, awesome people, very nice, very helpful. So now I got my workout cut out for me. I got all the crap I need. I need to start practicing casting and uh, try to catch my first fish eventually here. All right, so I just got back from the fly shop. Chris is getting into fly fishing as well. He's been practicing a little bit just in his backyard. So I was gonna go over there and just do that. But I thought it'd be more fun to come out here. There's a public pond that has fish in it. Um, I don't really care about catching fish, but I wanted to practice on water. So we're gonna see how lovely this is. <laughs> So today is going to be my first day in the stream with the new fly rod. Um, I did some practicing at the pond last night and to say I'm terrible is an understatement but I'm not going to get any better if I don't practice with it, with it so I'm going to give it a try. But my all time favorite trout stream, I always have great luck here. Um, it's a little bit tight so I'm probably going to lose some flies, probably going to get a lot of snags but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. So before I even start, I'm gonna throw my waders on, head down to the stream, and flip over a rock just to see what's in the stream. I have no idea what bait I should be using, or what flies I should be using, but um, I'm gonna go see if I can figure that out. If not, I'm just gonna guess and hope for the best. Let's see what we got here. <sighs> hmm, nothing on that one. I think what I'm gonna go with, because it seems somewhat easier to me, maybe, is uh, a nymph with a strike indicator. Um, yeah, we'll give it a shot. If there's one thing I've learned about fly fishing so far, it's that everything is just a much bigger pain in the butt and a lot harder, uh, especially just figuring this out. But I got my pole all spooled up, now I gotta pick out a fly. All right. I think I'm gonna go with this guy. I don't know why, it just feels good to me. A uh, little, don't know what the heck that is, but it's got a copper head, maybe that's good. Looks like it's got some little whatever's on it, so we'll give it a shot. Some wood ducks are going nuts. I think I got a good start there. <laughs> so, we will see you down in the river. Well, I already lost one guy. 100% certain I put my reel on backwards. So. That's not ideal either. It is definitely obvious. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've already sent one fly, whoosh, snapped it off, whipped it into the woods. So I'm gonna tie another one on and try this again. This is going to be a humbling experience. <laughs> I have my spinning reels, everything in me wants to just go up there and do that because I know I'd be catching fish if I just threw those on. 
And I will do that at the end of the day, but I want to at least give this a fair shake. I gave it a fair shake. I haven't been this bad at something in a long time. So, I did buy a brand new St. Croix spinning rod. I'm excited to uh, try out. I've already blown through like the best hole in all of Wisconsin for brook trout. Um, I always catch fish here, so before I ruin this entire stream, I'm gonna put the old fly rod away, and uh, I will be coming back to this. This is something I want to do and get into, but um, I'm no good at it, that's for sure. All right, I am back in the truck, man. Fly fisherman, I've got to give it to you. You are better than I. That is a tough little dealio there. I'm really really bad at it but uh i am gonna keep practicing i gotta practice just casting in general just in the yard and in the grass and stuff before i get back in the stream because it's just a whole lot of monking around and being in the water complicates everything but after i put the fly rod away and busted out the uh spinning rod i did catch three nice brookies um the two were probably around nine inches the um, third one is probably 11, 10, 11, 12 inches, somewhere in there. And then I missed one brook trout that was just huge. It had to have been a 15 inch brook trout and it just looked like a football. One of the, definitely actually the biggest brook trout I've ever seen in the water. Um, he struck right at my feet and I missed him. So that kind of sucks, but that last brook trout I actually got to hand was, uh, was a real nice fish. Um, brook trout like that, man, they make my day. They're just such beautiful fish and a whole bunch of fun to catch. So. That was fun, felt really good to get back on the stream. I am going to head to the cabin now. This stream is only five minutes from my cabin, so I'm gonna put out a turkey blind because my turkey tag um, season is coming up pretty quick here. And then on the way home, I got one more stream that I wanna fish um, to try to get on some browns. This is actually the stream where Cameron caught that uh, giant brown two weeks ago or so. So gonna head to the cabin real quick and then uh, hopefully get back on the stream on the way back home. What a fun day, just happy to be back doing stuff like this. Thank you guys all for watching along. Um, I will be practicing fly fishing, my casting in the yard, and um, I will be back. I, I, wanna, I wanna get that down, but it needs a lot of work. So until then, I'm with a little bit of time I do get to get away and go fishing, I'm probably gonna use a spinning rod until I really feel comfortable with that. If any of you fly fishermen are watching and feel like you wanna teach this, uh, this newbie here uh definitely give me a shout i'd love to go with someone that actually knows what they're doing and could give me some pointers so until the next video thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video